Okay, today in this video we're going to look at um, a slightly different aspect of conflicts and, and challenges. We're going to look at uh, multiculturalism. And the spec asks us to look at multicultural societies in the UK. And it asks us to examine the challenges, the reasons for their development, and the distribution of, of cultural groupings. And in this video I'm just going to give you a short background to uh, multiculturalism in the UK. First of all, what I want you to do is just listen um, to the following poem that I'm going to play on, on YouTube. It's called uh, The British and it's written by uh, a poet called Benjamin Zephaniah. You may have heard of, heard of him before. And I want you to think as you listen to it, what is this poet's uh, message? So what's the poem's message? And can you extract any, any reasons why multiculturalism has developed in the UK from uh, the poem? after approximately 400 years, add lots of Norman French, some Angles, Saxons, Jutes and Vikings, then stir vigorously. Mix of hot Chileans, cool Jamaicans, Dominicans, Trinidadians and Bayesians with some Ethiopians, Chinese, Vietnamese and, and Sudanese. Then we can blend of Somalians, Sri Lankans, Nigerians and Pakistani. Combined with some Guyanese and twin of Sprinkles of West Indians, Malaysians, Bosnians, Iraqis, and Bangladeshis. Together with some Afghans, Spanish, Turkish, Kurdish, Japanese, and Palestinians. Then add to the melting pot. Leave the ingredients to sit. As we mix and blend, allow the languages to flourish, binding them together with English. Allow time to be cool. <laughs> Okay, so I asked you, uh, before you listen to that, what was the poem's message and why does multiculturalism develop? You may find it easier to, to just pull up a, uh, a transcript of that poem so you can actually see the words. Um, but there are several messages uh, buried within this poem. Firstly, that the UK has a long history of immigration, uh, certainly stretching back over several centuries. Uh, that also UK society is a mixture of different ethnic backgrounds. So the UK's society is incredibly diverse in terms of uh, ethnic um, minorities. He then goes on to talk about prejudice and the possibility that treating one ethnic constituent of this mix differently can cause tension and conflict. And we'll explore that uh, when we start to look at issues uh, associated with multicultural societies. But most importantly, um, I did ask, well, you know, why does multiculturalism develop? And um, perhaps here we can explore the issue that migration, it's the migration of people that drives multiculturalism, but that conversely, multiculturalism can also be the stimulus for it. So, for example, if uh, multiculturalism in a given society results in oppression or the mistreatment of one particular ethnic group, that can be a spur to uh, migration itself. So multiculturalism driven by migration, but also multiculturalism as the driver of migration as well. Now, as I've said, the UK has an incredibly diverse um, society, and there are several reasons uh, why this multicultural society has developed in addition to migration. Um, firstly, we've got marriage or partnerships between different ethnic groups and the white British population. So we've got this uh, mixing by, by marriage or partnership. Uh, migrants, I think, often have the perception uh, that the UK is a safe haven, a free society and a fair society that is devoid of persecution. So that, that's an attractive uh, proposition and encourages this migration and therefore drives the development of multicultural society. 
Um, interestingly, in the UK, as a, uh, in contrast with other European countries, there has been a distinct lack of development of far-right political parties. I think most of our frustrations with immigration these days are channeled via the Tory party and latterly through uh, other parties such as UKIP. Uh, we have had parties such as the BMP, um, which have become reasonably established, but certainly not uh, become mainstream. And groups like uh, the English Defence League remain relatively pr uh, peripheral in terms of their political ambitions. And finally then, it's, uh, it's, it's membership of the EU that has also driven the development of our multicultural society. And this point is, is particularly relevant in more recent years. So joining the EU uh, and the principles enshrined within EU statutes um, associated with the freedom of movement, yep, the Schengen Agreement, uh, the ability of um, inhabitants of other European Union countries being able to move freely across borders uh, to work and live with other, within other EU countries. Okay, so one of the, uh, the key moments in post-war um, British uh, immigration was certainly the arrival of the SS Windrush, which was a, a passenger ship uh, which arrived at, at Tilbury Docks in Essex in June 1948, carrying about 500 passengers um, from Jamaica. And this event really heralded uh, the start of, of mass immigration into Britain, into the UK after World War II. And the period started really with the, the mass immigration of, of people from our ex-colonies, yep, the old, old British Empire and the new Commonwealth countries. And this certainly set off a pattern that for at least 20 years was, was replicated. So the incoming mass immigration of uh, population from the new Commonwealth. So what I'd like you to do is, is conduct some investigation, and really this is a fact-finding mission. Um, I've put up several images here just to, to get you thinking, but I want you to do some investigation into recent post-World War II immigration into the UK. We've got various pictures here to get you thinking, so pictures of the wind rush. Um, we've got Idi Amin here in the centre. I want you to think about um, how he has influenced immigration into the UK. Put some pictures down the bottom here of Ethiopia, um, of Mo Farah, think about where Mo Farah is from and what uh, caused uh, him to come to, to Britain and in what period in particular. Uh, we've then got Afghanistan. I want you to think about how global events in countries such as Afghanistan has driven immigration into the UK. And also top right here we've got an uh, image of a uh, Polish food, food shop and a Polish migrant. And I want you to think about... Um, why Polish people in particular have come to the UK and over what period uh, did they start coming? What was the particular event um, in recent years that has happened to begin this new wave of migration from certainly Eastern European countries? Now Wikipedia, uh, the Wikipedia page that I've put up here is a very good start, uh, UK immigration since 1948, but there are plenty of others to use. Uh, the BBC is also a good uh, starting point. Uh, and what I'd like you to do is, is to gather some data, some information of the major influxes of population into the UK since 1948. Figures are essential, but I also want you to think and note down the reasons why these immigrants move from their source countries. So what events have caused their movement? Why have these people been able as well to get uh, entry into the UK?